Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about virtual machine memory management in XCPNG and how you set the dynamic memory and how you can change it dynamically on a running VM. Now, I bring this up because there's a few caveats that I want to make sure people understand about dynamic memory management and what happens when you over allocate, as in you've assigned a group of VMs that cumulatively have more memory needs than the host can provide, but there's ways you can set a dynamic sizing on there so that they can, well, keep running and keep working on that particular host. Now, where someone can get into trouble is if they live migrate this, and this came up during a consulting call, because when you do a live migration and there's dynamic memory options set, well, it will reduce the host to its lower dynamic number. That's what that dynamic number is for before it moves it over to another host and then re as it's called balloons the memory back up to the dynamic maximum that's been set so i want to walk through that process and yes this does work with virtual machines that are built in linux and in windows provided they have the zen agent running and loaded on them that is a prerequisite for this to work properly just so you know but before we dive into the details of this video let's first are you an individual or company looking for support on a network engineering storage or virtualization project is your company or internal IT team looking for someone to proactively monitor your system security or offer strategic guidance to keep your IT systems operating smoothly? Not only would we love to help consult on your project, we also offer fully managed or co-managed IT service plans for businesses in need of IT administration or IT teams in need of additional support. With our expert install team, we can also assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning projects. If any of this piques your interest, fill out our Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com so we can start crafting a solution that works for you. If you're not interested in hiring us, but you're looking for other ways you want to support this channel, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And now back to our content. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is just how we set the dynamic and static and what those mean when it comes to setting memory limits. So we're going to go into the VM, we're going to go over to Advanced, we're going to scroll down over here. The template that you use to build your virtual machine will set the static minimum right here. So the static minimum is two gig. The difference between static max and static min, and we'll actually go ahead and try and change this here. We'll change this to 32 and we're going to get an error message that setting on VM time windows memory VM state is running and should be halted. You cannot change the static limits while the virtual machine is running. These are the limits that you have set. But what you can change is the dynamic ones. Because if I don't want to start a VM, restart a VM, or stop and start the service and change memory settings, maybe I want to bring it down to its minimum and then bring it up to its maximum of, well, 16 gigs. But if I tried to say 24 or even 32 gigs, it won't let me change it to a maximum above what those static limits are set. It's really that simple. You set these so the system understands the potential for this VM when it's not running. And then the dynamic and lower and upper limits are set so you can change it while it is running. Now, the things and considerations to take. When you migrate the VMs, and we're doing that and showing that in a Linux VM to show how it's reduced, when I move this, live migrate it, it will actually reduce down to its minimum. And that's one of the reasons that's set. The reason it does that is to at least the way I understand it, when you migrate a VM, it makes it faster by saying, well, we aren't going to need all of this memory, so we're going to reduce it to its minimum, migrate it over to the other host, and then expand it or balloon it back up to its maximum that you have set in these dynamic ranges right here. But this can obviously cause a problem. If I have it set to two and the application is running, still require more, it may have some trouble during the migration. So you may want to set that to at least the minimum that this would need when you're doing the live migration. If you're not doing live migration, it'll still dynamically go up and down. But actually, let's just show you how you can dynamically in Windows change the memory settings and what happens. So currently it has the maximum right here of 16 gigs that we can set. We can see it. It's eight gigs now. So we look at here in the stats and you can see I've actually played with this a couple times already uh, changing it just before the I started the video. So let's go ahead and change it to 16. So we'll just take this running Windows VM and hit 16. It turns yellow for a second since it's changing dynamic memory. Now it's changed. Let's go over to the console on this real quick and uh, it's a little big because of the screen size I have here, but we'll go ahead and open up the task manager. Scroll up and you can see, hey, look, it has 16 gigs of memory showing in here. 
but we're going to do this in Linux and play around with the settings and show you what happens when you over provision things and how it balances all of that and some of the things that change with it. So we're going to stop the Windows one. Let's go over to our Linux ones. Now, first thing I want to do is go to this first VM that we have, go to advanced and just see what it's set at. So we have it set to four gigs max. The template allows it going all the way down to 512, pretty lightweight if it needs to be. Uh, but we have a dynamic set four by four. And I want to leave it at that because I want to show you what happens when we start this virtual machine and when we move it. So we're just going to start. It's right now running on the Ryzen 2 host. It'll boot up relatively quick here. Okay, now it's booted up and it's using four gigs of memory. If we log into the console, we can see that it's using four gigs. There's the memory right here at the top. And let's migrate this. And we're going to do a live migration while it's running. So we're going to say migrate. I want to move it over to Ryzen 1. This is going to happen incredibly fast. So actually click on tasks here. Two, three, one, now go three. Okay, well, like four seconds, we moved it over. And you can see now it's on Ryzen 1 and it's still running. We don't have to restart the machine. Now, because we left the lower and upper the same, it did nothing to the memory. It says, hey, the minimum this goes to is four, the maximum it goes to is four. Therefore, we are going to move the four gigs of memory from this host to the other host without making any adjustments when we do it. Let's see what happens though when we go to advanced here. And we're going to set this down to one. You got to remember this is dynamic and we just can't go below this 512 number here. So we'll set this one at one gig, four gig, and we'll do the same thing again. We're going to migrate it back over to the other host that it's next to. So we'll go here, hit OK. And this is going to take a little bit longer. And it's taking only slightly longer because it's going to downsize it a little and bring it back up. And we're going to do a bigger move so you can actually see that in action and see the memory change. Right there, you can see it blipped back and forth. And so we can do that one more time back on the other way. If we do it this way, you're actually going to watch it do it. So we'll keep an eye right here. It's reducing down the memory and then ballooning the memory back up. Now the console flickers for a second when it does the change because it moved to the other host. Hey, and there's our memory. And now it's going to reinflate it back up. So we're at 827. Then it's going to climb back up as it reallocates on the next server. This is why those dynamics are important because if I had applications that were running, it's going to actually cause it to slightly hang doing that because it's going to get stuck trying to evacuate that memory while things are running. So let's go ahead and split the screen. We'll use Tmux. We're just going to put htop here and then we're going to get it down here at the bottom. And we're going to run this command here, stress dash ng dash dash vm space one dash dash vm dash bytes four gigs to allocate four gigs of memory. So we're going to watch the memory usage at the top go, well, all the way to four gigs, a little over, and it's going to start using swap because, you know, we're over allocating everything here a little bit beyond because we didn't leave any room for the operating system to run. But that's kind of the goal. This is now a heavily loaded up machine in terms of memory. And we're going to try to do a migration while these dynamics are still set down really low. So we still got the dynamics set down to one gig and four gig. But obviously, if we're using up all that memory, what's going to happen? And I'm not exactly sure what state the VM will be in, but let's go ahead and do a migration to the other host. Hit OK. One, I don't think it's going to happen as fast. It's going to try to do some reduction, but it's not going to have anywhere to reduce to. So it'll probably increase the swap would be my guess uh, what's going to happen here. But obviously, it's already taken substantially longer because it's thinking and trying to sort that out while it does the migration. So it's still on the Ryzen 1. It's still trying to figure out how to get this memory allocation. It's running some processes on there. And I'm wondering if it's actually going to crash the VM altogether when it does. I think we may have locked it up here, folks. And this is why it's important to have those dynamics. Now, this would run, and it still might continue to run because it's just stuck thinking right now. Oh, there we go. It's still going. But this is when you don't have that dynamic low set to a reasonable number. Uh, well, it just pushed it all to swap and is pushing it back. Did it migrate yet? Maybe? We're doing this all in real time because I want to show you how these problems occur when people are uh, setting these up and why it's important to think about the workloads you have on there because when you dynamically are allocating them, this is the type of scenarios you'll run into. Easy to set up a really basic VM with no workload and migrate them in a matter of like five seconds. Much harder to do it when you have a workload and well, 
I think we've actually just got this. Maybe it's stuck. It still seems to be going here in the task. So it's slowly getting there. I could also just stop the process running, uh, the stress NG process and kill it. And it would probably do in it. So do suspend freeze process failed. Yeah. Freezing task failed after 20 seconds. <laughs> One task refusing to freeze. I like the uh, phrasing it uses here. So the system's under high load, trying to do some memory swapping around here uh, to get this over to the other side. So I think we'll stop this process real quick here before it crashes and we have to force a reboot. So we'll, there we go. I stop stress NG. That'll probably allow this process to carry on and continue. But this is why it's important that when you're setting these minimums, you're considering the workload that's on there and that your minimum doesn't go below what the workload will at least need to get things done. Now, a lot of times different tools may use the extra memory for caching and that memory for caching may be able to be reduced. And you just have to test this on an application by application basis of whether or not you can do that. I mean, ideally, if you live in the ideal world, you have enough memory for all of your applications. But you know, the reason these tools exist is because the real world doesn't always have the ability to do that. So you have a more challenging environment where you want to get these done. And I think this is going to spin a little bit longer. So we'll go ahead and actually kill this server and see if it, see what status we leave it into or if it'll actually finish or it's still estimating that it'll, it'll move. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we'll give it a few more minutes here. We'll just fast forward. All right, all we ended up with was an operation failed. It failed to migrate the VM because of those dynamic memory problems being hit, but it's on the Ryzen 1 server. I had to restart that server to stop it after it failed and restart it. It's ready to go again. Now with nothing running on it, of course, we're gonna go ahead and migrate, hit this, and now it's gonna pop itself over to the Zen 2 server back into our couple seconds to get this task done. There we go, migration completed. It's over on Ryzen 2 now. The next step I wanna talk about is over allocating the available memory and how it dynamically is going to resize these on a given host. So if we look at our Ryzen 2 system here, we currently have 62 gigs of free memory. So there's the different things that are running on here. And now let's over extend this system. So let's assign some VMs with more than 62 free, but they have these dynamic options that will allow them to go lower. And we'll go ahead and include our Windows system in this as well. So take the Windows system and it's shut down so we can adjust all these different limits. And we're going to assign Windows 64 gigs on both sides. We're going to say 64 over here. Now the minimum Windows is down to two. I don't think Windows should go below eight gigs on here. So here's this system and we're going to specifically start it on that particular host of Ryzen 2. So we'll go over here. We're over allocated already because there's well we're right at the limit because there's 66 gigs free and we got this one assigned 64. we'll go ahead and let windows start up on here and it's thinking about it right now and the reason it's pausing and thinking is because because wait a minute there's just not quite enough memory so it's going to make some adjustments on here and see if anything else can give up some memory get this host started all right windows has started on there and we click on this we've pretty much now filled it all up. Well, there's 12, 12 megabytes free. So just a little bit of free space on there. Now let's go and look at this system here. This one's got four gigs. It's also running on there. Let's go ahead and just stop it though. Go over here and we'll set this one at 32, but well, let's only give it 16 for now. We'll set a maximum of, or a minimum of eight and a maximum of 16 here. So we'll go ahead and also we're going to start on and we'll put this one on Ryzen 2. Now, remember Ryzen 2, that particular system is already uh, pretty much over allocated. So we go over here, look at Ryzen 2, and it's got to make some decisions now. Who's going to lose some memory? Well, these other ones don't have those same minimums. So this one does. So this one right here is going to say, we're going to shrink how much Windows has here. So before that VM starts, this is why it still hasn't started, it's reducing and evacuating memory out of this one because it can adjust that dynamic and that will leave us enough free space to then start that next VM. So now this VM is starting. And we'll see how much memory is, once it boots up, uh, we'll see how much memory is allocated to this particular system. Which it looks like it was able to allocate the 16 to it. Once it starts, it'll talk to the processes running inside there and then decide exactly how much memory it needs. So let's go ahead 
and start one more. And we'll do the same thing on this one. We'll say this one's going to get this max of 16. Minimum, it's going to leave it four, but we'll put it at 16. Maybe this one will give 32. We're, let's go all out here. You can have up to 32, but dynamically, we'll leave it at these ones here. And once again, go up to the top and we want to start it on that particular VM. If you just hit start, it'll start on a host that has enough resources to handle that. Uh, but we're going to you know, force its hand and say, we don't care that this one doesn't have enough resources. Uh, you're going to have to figure that out. And that's what the system's doing now. So now it's going to start resizing these other ones to try and figure out where it can find free memory. So it's taking it away from the Tom Windows again. And where's that other one on here? There's my other one. It's already reduced this one. It says you only need 13 right now. It's going to reduce this one a little bit more and then find room to fire up this virtual machine. And once this one here, oh, there we go, it's booting up. And so it's understanding what processes are in there. So now we have all these VMs, which are technically provisioned at a rate higher than the available memory on that particular host, but it just keeps reducing them. So we have, you know, the mins and maximum set. Now, what will happen again, and we'll wait till all these VMs are up and running, which I think they should be now. This one's got a, just a few more seconds to go. And there's that ballooning message that you'll see because it's Zen ballooning, waiting for initial ballooning uh, down, having finished. That's that process that's going on because it's adjusting this dynamically to allow for that space to be had. It's pretty simple once you start understanding what these numbers are doing with the dynamic and static and what's going on in the background. But there's a lot of complicated things going on in the back end to make sure these hosts are working. And this is where, as I said, you can get yourself into trouble, especially if you don't understand the workloads and the minimum requirements of your workload in order to make this happen. Because right now with these having pretty much no workload on them with lots of free memory, it's easy to balloon them. But that ballooning process will run into some limits if there's just tools like stress ng running that say nope i refuse to give up my memory i need this much memory it's locked in here um, and you'll start having vm migration problems but we'll show you what happens now when we migrate it because now that we've got this completely filled up again with these different vms how do we free up some space dynamically well that's pretty easy so we'll take and log into one of these like this one here run htop so we can see the memory We've got 12 gigs. We've got a maximum set right now that it's 16 gigs. And how do we get that extra 16? Well, now we got to take this and migrate it over. So let's go ahead and migrate this over to the other one that has plenty of free memory in it. And that will happen relatively fast. But you got to remember, it's actually going to shrink down first because we have that minimum set. So as it kicks off that process, it's going to reduce the amount of memory. So here we go, watching it go down. And that's going to be based on that dynamic minimum we set of eight so it's going to go all the way down to eight and once that completes it'll migrate over to the other VM, other host and then expand it back out probably to its maximum because if i had to guess and even though it's eight right now let's go ahead and look at this if we look at this one here oh there's plenty of ram we've got 72 gigs free so it shouldn't have any problem at all expanding that one out and it's already done that so if we go back over to the council it's expanding back up, ballooning it out again, and you're back at the full memory. Now, hopefully this demonstration gives you a better understanding of how the dynamic memory management works, how it will allocate, and why those dynamic minimums are so important that they do not go below whatever the workload minimum threshold is for that particular virtual machine and the things you have running on it. Because, well, I think that's where you can really find yourself in some of those problems of causing the VMs to crash, be in an unknown state, or just tell you the operation is going to fail because it doesn't have the ability to do that. Now, if there's enough interest, I might do this for processors as well, because yes, you can over allocate processors. It's much more forgiving when you do that, when you have, well, uh, 24 cores available and maybe you assign five or six VMs, all those cores, but as long as they're not all using it at once, there's some advantages to doing that. Leave your thoughts and comments down below or head to my forums for a more in-depth discussion. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top.
To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.